Okay, well, I wanted to show you a little bit about what a server looks like. You think about connecting to servers all the time, but many of you have probably never operated or seen physically what a server looks like. This is a server. This is a server I used to use in my business. It's um, uh, relatively common um, as far as a server of this size uh, and at least what it was at the time. So this is an older Dell. Uh, it's not in use anymore. Otherwise, especially with my um, sweater on, I would have a wrist strap and I would ground myself so that anytime I was touching or interacting with it, I wouldn't have to worry about static electricity frying the thing. So um, uh, some of the things you'll notice, it doesn't look uh, very portable, right? So it's uh, not exactly a laptop here. It's very heavy. It has this odd form factor. It's actually very standard. It's uh, a certain uh, measurement high. It's called one rack unit or RU and then it's 19 inches wide. So it's very standard. So what you would find is you would find a whole bunch of these they would just be racked up one on top of another. Some of them uh, servers will occupy more than one rack space. So they may be a 2RU high, for example, or they may be three or four. The, um, so that's one of the characteristics that we can list about servers, that they are rack mountable. So they would actually fit into a rack and you notice there's little screw holes and such that would help with that mounting. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that it has a little port here for uh, graphics for a um, uh, monitor to connect to and there's one in the back as well but these are generally run headless okay so they're run without monitors so uh, the term is headless and uh, if you actually do need a monitor you would uh, run over to it with one on a cart Okay, so normally you manage it through the network, so uh, having a monitor or keyboard right next to it is not necessary in any type of data center or place you might put this. So that's another characteristic that we can write down about servers. If I open this up, you'll see the internal parts of it. Um, I have two uh, hard drives here, and as you remember from a previous lesson, these hard drives are configured so that one um, data on one is mirrored to the other. Remember what that is? That's RAID level, RAID level one. Okay, very good. So hopefully you remembered that. Um, these are a little bit awkward. We would have to take the computer offline. We'd have to take one out if we were actually to rebuild this RAID set if something did go wrong. You'll notice there's a number of fans here. These are actually eight fans that are um, put together here and they are sucking in air from the front and they are moving it out the back of the computer. Okay, same thing here. These fans are moving it this way. So there's a pattern of airflow that is also common. You will find every server is going to do the same thing. We'll talk in a little bit about how you can actually uh, deal with that. That helps because you can dump cold air in the front of this and all your hot air will be out the back for collection. So that's sometimes called hot aisle containment. So you have the hot aisle where you can suck up all that hot air and then you'll dump cold air in the front of this. And it can be very significant, the temperature difference as it moves through here. Now, so these are the hard drives. So uh, one of the other characteristics we want to write down about servers is that they have tremendous cooling requirements. And in fact, um, that's why you'll see some companies like Facebook, when they went for their European data center, they actually decided to locate it in a place, I think it was in uh, Norway or Finland or someplace like that, uh, where it was colder. And so they didn't have to pay as much for their cooling requirements. They could have access to cold water or cold air. So inside of this, we have uh, the processors. Um, those are the, the parts right here underneath uh, this uh, piece. Um, as I said before, these are the fans. These are hard drives. This over here is our power supply. Okay. Um, this is our memory. Um, so it's a little bit higher quality than what you're going to have in your uh, PC. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, uh, we have these two uh, processors. So um, they can uh, uh, operate, um, well, they operate kind of in unison um, with the way the operating systems work. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you here 
is that on the very back of this, um, you'll notice, for example, we have two network ports. So these are redundant. So if one fails, the other one will switch over. And in fact, when we had this installed in the data center, we then had um, each network uh, cable would go to a different switch. So if there's something wrong with the cable or if there's something wrong with the switch, um, we tried to build as much redundancy in as we could. Now this power supply is not redundant, but it's not uncommon to see redundant power supplies as well. So that way if the, uh, and once again, you would run power to different sources um, that come into the building. So that way if one source goes down, the other source uh, is still there and the uh, server can run off that other power supply. So a lot of redundant features in these. Um, also, um, like I said, this one doesn't have it with the way these hard drives are, but it's not uncommon nowadays to actually have all your hard drives in the front uh, and have them where they're hot swappable. So you can actually um, come up to the machine. If there's a bad hard drive, you can punch that um, a little button and it will pop that out and then you can replace it with a fresh one and it will rebuild that hard drive and be off and running and the server has no downtime whatsoever during that. Um, just for those that are really wanting to geek out a little bit, I'll tell you that um, there's often some onboard uh, chipset here where it allows for management of the uh, computer outside of the operating system. So um, Dell has their own kind of way to do that and I'm sure other um, manufacturers uh, do as well. So that's a little tour of a server. So if you never get the opportunity to uh, see one for yourself uh, or to be in a data center, uh, you at least know what the heck um, you're talking to when you talk to a web server, you talk to an email server or something like that.